One year ago, just after the massive BP oil spill, this is what water around the Gulf of Mexico well looked like. Even under the surface, softball-sized blobs of oil hung suspended. Now, flying over the spot where the explosion happened, you'd never know it. No signs visible to the Associated Press that anything ever happened here. But what about underwater? One year after we dove into the Gulf's oily waters, we went back for another look. Last summer, there were disturbing signs of damage. On several rigs, everything was dead from the waterline down as far as 40 feet. While there's no proof oil or dispersants killed off these areas, several scientists who examined our video call it likely. This time, we dove with an expert. Dr. Quentin Dawkin runs the Gulf of Mexico Foundation. Dawkin closely examined the coral, oysters, fans, and even small fish that live along the legs of the same oil rig we visited one year ago. This time, things looked better. There was absolutely no evidence, visual evidence, that uh, these platforms, these reefs, artificial reefs, had ever been in, in the proximity of a major spill. Dawkins Foundation does receive money from oil companies, including BP and Transocean. It also works with government agencies like the EPA and NOAA. The foundation's goal is to help find a balance between industry and the environment. And Dawkins has been saying for months now the spill was not the environmental disaster. Many others seem to be saying it was. We look at the maps and we see that the area impacted by the Macondo blowout and spill, and we think, boy, that's a big area. Relative to the Gulf of Mexico, it's not. It's a small area. Now, that does not mean that its impact was not uh, significant to the people living in that area, but it's not really a threat to the overall ecology and health of the Gulf of Mexico. We also showed our video to other scientists, including Dr. Paul Samarco from the Louisiana University Marine Consortium. So Marco noticed several areas of bleached um, coral, and while he too saw more life than last year, he expected there was also something missing. didn't see any larger fish, except maybe one, in the videos that you showed. What I was seeing was a lot of small fish, which of course make it look vibrant, and that's good, but it's looking as though the older, larger fish that make up the larger population, the resident population, weren't there. We don't know why they weren't there, and visibility was so poor it's possible there were a few and we simply didn't see them in our time beneath the surface. But Samarco's suspicion is some of the larger species didn't fare well in the spill. He's also still concerned about those areas where life seems to be returning to normal. I look at this video and I say it's possible for things to bounce back, which is good. You go to an area and you see a dead area, you know, whoa, okay, so you say, oh, there's a terrible effects. And these, these are the lethal effects. But in an area like you've just been to, what we don't know is the sublethal effects. What we don't know is what, right now, what the concentrations are of petroleum hydrocarbons in their tissues. We don't know how it's affecting their reproduction. A diver who works with LUMCON took water and tissue samples from our dive site to try and determine if oil is still out here. Those results won't be available, though, for months. So a year later, how bad was the spill to the overall health of the Gulf? That depends on who you ask. This has been a pretty, probably the worst perturbation that, that, that this area, body of water has seen in, it's difficult to say, but probably thousands of years. Really, in the big scheme of things, in the big scope of the entire volume and area of the Gulf of Mexico, it's a small, small area, small impact. It may take years to find out who is right. Rich Matthews, Associated Press in the Gulf of Mexico.